What's up? Welcome to Saturday's Warrior. So now that the Big 12 looks to have stopped with expansion, at least for now, at 16 teams, the focus seems to have been moved on to how should the conference divide for scheduling purposes? Should they have divisions or pods and what should those look like? And so I started putting thoughts together for this and created the thumbnail. And then the next morning's BYU Sports Nation posted the same thought as their question of the day. So I decided to comment. I posted uh, this picture for my thumbnail. And our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes in from Saturday's Warrior on X. Okay, well, that's a reference to an all-time <laughs> yes, program. Yes, it is. Okay. A nose is a nose, Spence. Says, we should divide it by a mascot. Each side should get a cougar, wildcat, mustachioed man in a cowboy hat, horned creature, and so on. <laughs> and what? Cosmo's Captain America! So while that was fun to get that mention on BYUSN, we do have some thoughts, uh, some more serious thoughts on how we think that the conference should be scheduled. And so we're going to jump into that. But before we do, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share. All those things really help us a lot in the algorithm and help us get out there. Um, so we appreciate that. We recently just broke uh, 500 mark, which was a, a big uh, benchmark for us. So thank you so much. And now let's get into it. So first, let's run with this mascot idea. I know it's a bit silly, but if you're creating two divisions and you're and you're dividing it by mascots, trying to keep the teams even, it actually works better than you'd think. So just bear with me. I'm, I'm also using geography as a secondary criteria. So if we got two sets of cougars. We also have two sets of wildcats as well as what are essentially cowboys. They are gunslinging, cowboy hat wearing guys from the West. And then we also have, and we're, this is where we got to get a little more creative, two sets of horned creatures, both desert. So I don't know, bear with me. And then we also have two other human fighter type guys. They are not as tight of a parallel. You got a knight as well as a, a mountaineer, but it works. And then we have two schools that are represented by birds. You got the Utes as well as the Cyclones. And then we've got two big terrifying animals you would not want to run into in the wild. And then lastly, we have, and I know Jayhawks and Bearcats don't seem to have a lot in, in common, but they're both essentially made up animals by combining two other animals together. And then lastly, we have two mascots that come by basically combining two other animals into one. They're two made up animals. So you've got the Jayhawk, which is likely coming from a Blue Jay and a Hawk, as well as the Bearcats. And the Bearcats, I was corrected on Twitter, it is a real animal. There's an animal from China that is called a Bearcat, but that was not how the name originated. I think they lucked into that it actually ended up being a real animal uh, after the fact. And the, the Jayhawks it has some great history with their name but so anyway you look at this now looking at the map this actually works out pretty well other than west virginia which is out there on an island so if we just consider all four human mascots kind of the same and then we switch oklahoma state and west virginia and now does that still keep the teams even enough let's see and the map makes a lot more sense so this could be a way to divide the schools into two divisions. However, we see the other major conferences moving away from the division system to other structures. And one that I've seen thrown out there a lot is the pod system. And why this works so well, especially with 16 teams, is you can have four pods of four and they all play each other. So that's three of your in-conference games. And then assuming we keep nine in-conference games, that gives you six other. That means you'd be playing two from each other pod and you could rotate through all the schools and it's very clean easy to track makes a lot of sense and of the pods this is my favorite one i've also seen another one where iowa state is with the teams in the east and then oklahoma state is with the the other plains teams and then yeah all four texas schools but i like this one better a one houston's closer to ucf uh, but also it keeps iowa state with um, some more traditional rivals but as much as I like this system and it works really cleanly, I think it breaks up 
enough teams from other rivalries that we'd like to see happening more frequently. So what I would propose is doing a pod structure plus one. So then you get one other protected rivalry in there and it's essentially four schools that you'd be playing every year and then you'd be changing out those other five and you'd have to find a, a clean way to do that. It's not as nice as as the two from each of the other pods, but it is doable. And so I'll show you what I mean. Here's how I would break them up. I've heard a lot about the Arizona-Texas Tech rivalry. So I think that would be a great one. And it's actually pretty close geographically, which helps both those schools. And then uh, both BYU and Utah had a rivalry with TCU from the Mountain West days. But I think maybe Utah would be a little bit stronger there. As And plus BYU and Baylor seem to have a, what's going to be a budding rivalry. Right now it's really cordial, but that seems like that could turn into something really interesting. And then we have ASU and you know they don't want to be in the conference anyway, so they get Colorado pretty close geographically, and it connects Colorado with um, with the Pac-12 with those rivalries, as well as leaving allowing it to be in a pod with some of its more traditional Big Eight rivalries. So those ones work out pretty cleanly. It's the rest of the conference where it starts getting a little more tricky. But what I would do is I think Iowa State and Cincy really aren't too far from each other. So I think that one would be a great one to have. And then another would be Oklahoma State and West Virginia. And while they're not super close, I mean, nobody's super close to West Virginia. So you got to make travel as easy on them as possible. But also those two fan bases, you know, they're rowdy. They, they're they passionate. It really seems like that these two teams play each other every year in more of a, a rivalry type setting, I really think that that could turn into something. And OSU with losing Oklahoma, not saying this could replace the uh, th that this could replace Bedlam, but it could be a really fun rivalry to add. And now the last ones with the Kansas schools. What I would do these aren't as natural of rivalries, but Kansas and Houston, I think, especially because of basketball that that could turn into something and then the last one here you got k-state and ucf i don't really see any reason other than it's relatively close in terms of <laughs> as close as anybody is um in the conference for ucf and so um that's about the only reason it's kind of the last one that's there that's available so I think for the most part, this for and most schools, this works out really well and helps protect some rivalries as well as setting up some other really fun rivalries. But obviously, it's not perfect. Now, a system that I like even better than the Pod Plus One is having four protected rivalries. And this is similar to what the Big Ten is doing, uh, except they don't have a designated number. So a lot of schools have two to three rivalries. You've got Penn State that doesn't have any protected rivalries, which is crazy that you know they've been in the conference since the 90s and don't have any real true rivalries that are worth protecting. And then you have another one. I think Minnesota has as many as four protected rivalries. But I like the idea of protecting four per school because in a huge conference, especially one as spread out as the Big 12, it helps uh, protect geography it helps protect those more traditional rivalries and then makes ensures that you're playing these schools where there, there there are those biggest rivalries that you're seeing them more frequently and there aren't years in between for us to see that rivalry pick up again and i also really like having the rivalry week designated that it needs to be that thanksgiving weekend or the the last uh, the last game of the regular season against your primary rival. I, I mean, for in terms of the Holy War, I would be happy for BYU and Utah when they were in separate conferences just to play at any time. But playing at the beginning of the season versus playing on that last week with uh, co uh, conference championship or playoff implications on the line, there's nothing like that. So I think we... we ensure that rivalry week is protected. And this is how I would break it down. Now, a lot of these end up being the same as the pod plus one system. You look at Arizona, ASU, BYU, they end up playing the same four schools designated there. But then you have other schools like Cincinnati, where instead of going all the way down to Houston, they now have Kansas instead playing someone that's a little bit closer and you feel like regionally kind of fits better. 
or Houston, who in the other model wasn't playing any Texas schools in its pod or its protected rivalry, whereas now they get two. You know, they have the history with the Southwest Conference, and they're excited to finally be in a conference again with these schools and then to not have any of those rivalries protected. And based on what we saw from Houston and Texas Tech the last couple years, I think that could turn into a really interesting rivalry. And then instead of trying to force Kansas State and UCF into uh, a rivalry or a regularly played game, here now Kansas State is playing all legacy Big 12 schools. And UCF, instead of going all the way up to Kansas, is, has a second game taking him to Texas with Baylor, which would be a lot closer. So overall, I think these help in ter- and doing it this way and not limiting them by pods allows you to really protect the regionality and make sure that these key rivalries will stay intact. So what do you think, if you're a fan of any of these schools, did I miss any of the key rivalries that you want to see or are there any that look out of place? Please let me know in the comments. So if Brett Yormark ever happens to give us a call and ask for our opinion on how to set up scheduling for Big 12 football going forward, this is what we would tell him. How about you? How would you like to see the Big 12 scheduled? Uh, Do you like the divisions or pods or do you have another system? Please let us know in the comments and let us know any of the key rivalries that we missed today that we have to make sure stay intact. And please be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you next time.